What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is Gotham Season 2, Episode 21, A Legion of Horribles. And I don't know why I'm sitting all proper and stuff. Anyway, um, no, but this was a, a very good episode, a very exciting build-up to an epic finale. I'm really hoping some of the build-up to finales this year for some of the other shows have not been as good. So hopefully this one is a build-up to an epic finale. Uh, a lot of action, a lot of showdowns. I'm excited. So, we've got it pretty much a setup to what's going to end up happening next week, most likely. Um, you've got Bruce and Lucius and um, Jim all deciding we're going to go to Arkham and we're going to find out what's going on there. And of course, the entire time, all I can think is, no, Hugo Strange knows what's going to happen. Like, he's smarter than that. You're not just going to walk in, talk to him, Lucius goes and does his thing, Jim goes and does his thing, it's not going to work out. Like, we all know it's not going to work out. Uh, there was another show recently where there was a plan in place. What was... Right. The Flash. The Flash had an episode where they had a plan in place and they were setting up to do something that was going to do something. I'm not going to spoil in case anybody wants to watch it later, but... They had a plan in place, and then an episode ended where it looked like the plan had completely failed um, and backfired. And, of course, in the next episode, it all worked out okay. But it, it made it to where, okay, you've got a plan in place, and it seems like, okay, yeah, we're 100% confident this is going to work. And then after you try the plan, it fails, just so it's not 100% straightforward. Because if it was, if it was just, okay, we're going to do this and this and this, boom, problem solved, it would just be too easy, and it wouldn't be enjoyable, it wouldn't be as exciting. That's kind of how this felt. They were setting this all up, Lucius is taking a tour, and he says, as soon as I find out where this secret hidden entrance is, I'll mark it for you. Jim's like, okay, I'm going to go in, um, as a police officer, you know, bluff my way past the guard, way too easy in my opinion, but I think that was on purpose, <laughs> you know, Hugo Strange is just like, just let him in. Um, and then Bruce is going to distract Hugo Strange during all of this. And of course, after Strange gives Bruce a chance to back off, um, which I'm guessing is probably the same speech he gave to his father. Uh, and I, I kind of want to see if that's what happened. You know, Strange gave him sort of the same speech of back off, you know, let me do what I'm going to do. And then Bruce's dad said no. And then that's whenever Strange sent the assassin to kill him. Um... And of course, Bruce says, in a very good scene, by the way, I really like, uh, what's his name, David Mazus, maybe? Uh, this this kid playing Bruce Wayne is a very good child actor. You know, a lot, not a lot of great teenage actors nowadays. You know, what, sometimes I'll walk into a room and my little stepbrother will be watching Disney Channel. It's nothing compared to Disney Channel when I was a kid. You know, the, back then, it was actually good. The kid actors now are just... <laughs> you know, like, you want to throw up watching them because they're so forceful with all their jokes. Like, every single word out of their mouth has to be something super clever. And I'm just like, no, kids don't talk like that. That's what made Disney Channel great back in my day. The kids talk like kids. Anyway, I'm getting off on a rant that I shouldn't go on. My point is, David is a great actor. He's, I think he is still a teenager, um... I want to say he's probably 18 or 19 at this point, so he's not exactly Disney Channel age, but still, it's nice to see that um, he is growing up and he's doing very well, in my opinion. In fact, I think he was in an episode of Criminal Minds when he was younger. Um, anyway, but the scene with Doctor Strange is a very good one. He's telling him, you know, I'm going, I'm just like my father, like he said, you know, I'm going to fight for what I believe in. And that's whenever Strange is just like, okay, take them in. And that's when they grab Lucius and James. James. Jim. Jim, Jim, Jimmy, Jim. Uh, but yeah, it, it, there was a lot of good moments near the end whenever we were having, like I said, a bit of setup for the final episode. Uh, let me just go through each one really fast. Uh, for Selena kind of on the fence whether or not I like what they're doing with her and Bridget. Uh, 
Bridget now is officially Firefly. She believes she's Firefly, but it's a bit different than the Firefly I remember. Um, at least the one from the Arkham games as well. You know, he the one in that Garfield Lens is his name, and he's just a bit of a arsonist. You know, he's a pyromaniac, and he wants to burn stuff. That was his whole thing. Strange has convinced Bridget that she's a fire goddess, <laughs> um, and so she believes that she is this fire goddess, and that she commands fire. And Selena convinces her that you need a servant, and so that's what's going on there. I'm just like, really? That's how you get out of that? You're just like, oh yes, you're the goddess. Let me serve you. And anyway, I don't know. I'm a like I said, I'm a bit on the fence on that one. I'm just like, it seemed like it didn't really go anywhere. Um, but of course, the fact that we've got sort of several storylines evolving in this one episode, I guess the fact that that one did take sort of a back seat means that it gave time for others to grow a bit more. Um, the Fish Mooney storyline was also sort of pushed to the side, but I don't mind that uh, because it does... I, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing with her character. Now all of a sudden she can touch people and command them, and they're talking about, you know, she's the only one that awoke and knew who she was. Uh, I, I hate the way they handled that scene, though, because the way she said it, she's just like, no. I'm Fish Mooney. I'm just like, that's awesome. And then Strange is like, what? I didn't hear you. I'm like, really? You're... That line was great for the preview. You know, like the preview last week, you had that scene where she's like, I'm Fish Mooney, bitch. And I'm just like, yeah. You don't need to force it into this episode. You could have just had it for the preview last week and then cut it out of it. Because the way she said it was very well done. It was like, no, I'm Fish Mooney. I'm just like, yeah, that's Fish Mooney. And then he, it, just to force her to say it in a more, like, oh, yeah, that's a great line. You force that by Strange just saying, what? I didn't hear you. I'm like, yeah, you did. It just, you wanted her to say it again so she could say it more epic. Really? You couldn't have just, either have her say it at first, or just have her say, no, I'm Fish Mooney. And Strange is like, she thinks she, she knows who she is. You know, that would have been a better reaction than just, what? I'm Fish Mooney, bitch. And I'm just like, you guys just, it's all, it's all just a game, and you guys are just playing with it instead of really taking it seriously. Although, sometimes it leads to fun moments, like whenever Alfred goes and sees Harvey at the police station um, and says, you know, they aren't back, they've gone into Arkham, they haven't come back, something's wrong. Get your badging gun, let's go. And Harvey's like, wait, me, a, a greasy, fat old cop, and then you, a old British guy, we might be able to hold our own for a little bit. But the police chief, and then all of a sudden it cuts to a scene, and they're just like standing in the middle of this line of cops who are just like cocking their guns. That stuff is funny. You know, I just... They've really taken fun to Harvey's character this season, and I love it. You know, I love where they've gone with that. It's brought a lot of light to the show, where the very the first season was very grim and just like, oh, it's serious. Who killed Bruce's parents? And we gotta do all this and figure it. It was very serious, and not a lot of fun came out of it. This season has been a lot more fun, with the introduction of Jerome's Joker, with, um bringing in Captain Barnes, who, even though he is a very strict cop, he's kind of one of those funny strict cops, you know, like from a, a comedy uh, buddy cop show, you know, that cop that is just very strict and by the rules, and then you've got the one cop who doesn't play by the rules, which is Jim. They don't necessarily go complete comedy with it, but they take advantage of it, and it was very well done. Harvey's character has just really taken off in this season. Uh, in this, this scene... Shows exactly why. You know, we have fun moments where he's just like, oh, wait, yeah, we might be able to do it, but I'm the police chief now. Let's stand in front of all these cops and they cock their guns. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. So, yeah. Um, let's see. The other, the, the next one, I guess, to talk about would be Bruce and Lucius. They get locked in this room where we've seen, you know, Penguin being tortured, all of that stuff. Uh, and Nigma is behind the glass talking to him. Lucius somehow figures out it's him very, very easily. 
I was just like, I know that voice. I'm like, why? He's disguising it, isn't it? Like, it, he's not talking like he normally does, at least. Uh, but no, he figures out who it is, and Nigma's like, okay, you have five minutes to tell me everything you know, or the room's gonna fill with poison gas. I'm hoping this is how they're gonna do it, um, because this would really be an awesome setup for later. I'm hoping Bruce is able to figure out how to get out of this situation. You know, he's able to just, you know, he either discovers it's not actually poison or, you know, figures out a way to counteract it, figures out something to sort of keep them from dying. And that sort of, you know, Nigma doesn't like to be beaten. And so his focus becomes Bruce Wayne. And even though, you know, he'll never, he doesn't find out it's Batman later, but that sort of is a sort of parallel to Nigma and Batman just always going up against each other. Now it's going to be Nigma and Bruce for now. Um, I hope that's how they do it. I don't know exactly what they're going to do. Hopefully it's not just there's some sort of deus ex machina that comes in and saves Bruce and Lucius. That would be way too easy. I want Bruce to actually figure, or at least Lucius, to figure out how to get out of there. And that's really going to irk Nigma because he's been beaten again. So, yeah, I, I want to see that. And then finally, of course, you've got Jim. He gets taken in by Strange. Uh, they mask his head and then put it on this guy who just woke up and put his head. And then they take a wig that's obviously not Jim Gordon's hair and puts it on there. And then all of a sudden it becomes Jim Gordon's hair. I was like, really? We couldn't have done that maybe a bit better, that that wig. We couldn't have done that wig better. It just, it was such a bad wig. I'm like, that's not Jim's hair. And then they put it on and camera pulls away and it's like perfect. I'm like, mm, no. Fix that. Um, but anyway, it, it was an interesting scene. I, I'm curious to see what they're going to do with this fake Jim Gordon. Um, I thought it was very dumb of Jim, though. Like, completely against his character. That the guy is sitting there trying to figure out how to mask his voice. And Jim's just like, you son of a bitch. And the guy's just like, you son of a bitch. And I'm like, Jim, are you stupid? Like, just don't talk and he can't mimic you you know like don't say anything and he won't be able to figure out how to talk like you you do realize that right like I'm not the only stupid one here just shut up don't say anything but anyway so now the guy is fake Jim Gordon he's gonna go out there either say yeah we're fine Bruce is at home or something like M maybe say Bruce Wayne's dead or he's gonna come out there start shooting up shooting up the cops and they're gonna be like oh no Jim's turned against us and I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do, but hopefully it's clever. Hopefully it'll um, be something interesting that now Harvey and Alfred have to overcome or figure out that it's not actually Jim. I don't know. It's a lot of setup, um, a lot of build up to the finale. Maybe a little bit crowded, but like I said, the Selena and Fish storylines and even the Harvey and Alfred storylines sort of did take a back seat in this episode. So hopefully it all ties together in the final episode. Because if not, if there are actually like five different storylines going on in the final episode, it's going to be very crowded. So they are going to have to work it where some of them intertwine. You know, Obviously it's all connected to Arkham Asylum, but they're very separate when you think about it. You've got Selina and Bridget trying to figure out how to escape. You've got Fish discovering she's got powers. You've got Alfred and Harvey charging to Arkham to break out Jim, Lucius, and Bruce. You've got... Bruce and Lucius stuck in a, a chamber where they're about to die unless they figure out a way out. And then you've got Jim, who's just captured, and that's it. You know, like, I don't know. I, I'm looking forward to it, but at the same time, I'm slightly hesitant just because it feels like this could become very, very hectic and very just chaos, you know, everywhere. So maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll work to its advantage. I don't know. Uh, but they have done season two very well so far, so I'm looking forward to it. I hope they've got it good plan in mind. So let me know what you thought of it down in the comments below. If there's anything I missed that you want to talk about, anything specific, let me know. We can discuss it. Leave a like and subscribe for more Gotham. I'll see you at the season finale next week. Peace out.